if one observes what's going on in the United States today, uh, it is certainly not any kind of exaggeration to, to state uh, that here we see before us uh, an empire, some would even add the term evil, evil empire. Um, perhaps it was not always so, but it, 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 it uh, certainly it seems to be leaning much more towards the evil empire side of the, of the uh, spectrum. We see it before us a huge empire, an immense and, and vast apparatus of, 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 uh, of a country that is in decline, clearly in decline. And the most obvious example of this is the southern border and unrestricted immigration. Correct. Uh, and the obvious question that needs to be asked about this uh, is why? What is the aim of the Biden administration allowing many, many millions? I think the correct figure today is something over 10 million and up, but I'm not sure anybody actually knows. What is their aim in allowing such oh, unrestricted no, 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 no. illegal immigration? And it's clearly not a matter of incompetence. It's clearly a deliberate policy. It's deliberate, correct. There so are uh, two apparent reasons why they're doing this. Well, there, there are three, and I'm going to discount the first one, uh, that um, you know, it's a, uh, an effort to allow the poor huddled masses yearning to breathe free, if you will, from, from, re from reaching uh, the promised land, so to speak. And, uh, okay, we're going to discount that for a minute. There are two other reasons that are more likely why they're allowing this to happen. One of them is an economic reason. Uh, there are many, most countries in the West, uh, Japan included, that are not reaching replacement rate of their population, which means that their populations are shrinking um, and that they're going to be, in, they're going to be entering a very dangerous period of time where they will not be able to actually subsidize their welfare, their medical um, welfare system, their social security system, what have you, because there aren't enough workers that are producing um, enough um, money, if you will, um, through taxes to support these uh, supports, uh, economic supports of, of the citizens of these countries. So there's a feeling amongst some economists in the United States that, um, that what we should be doing is allowing as many people in to boost our population rate. And actually, the United States, because of this influx of undocumented um, aliens, um, is actually, the I believe, the only country in the industrialized West that's actually growing. That is, I'm referring to like Western Europe and uh, Japan in particular. Um, so that's one reason I've heard for this um, phenomena of an open border in the South. The third reason, which I've also heard, is that um, presumably all of these um, undocumented aliens coming into the country will eventually gain citizenship and vote uh, for the party that allowed them to reach the promised land, namely the Democratic Party. Um, we've already seen evidence of this, by the way, in New York, where um, local Democratic uh, legislators actually tried to get illegal aliens the right to vote in an election. It was shut down by the courts, but this is just an, an early indication of why or what the motives are behind the Democrats in particular from allowing all these um, individuals into the United States. Now, obviously, I'm not against immigration. It's just it has to be controlled. And if you look at other countries, what they're doing, for example, uh, Canada, uh, Britain and others, they're becoming very careful in who they let in, officially let in. These are people with, that are educated, that are you know, cleared for diseases, 
Uh, they have no criminal record. They're vetted more or less, and they're expected eventually to become assimilated in part of the country that they um, they want to become citizens of. Well, these people coming in that the Biden administration is letting in are, and I hate to say this, but it's the truth. We're looking at the dregs of the world coming in through that southern border. They aren't, and they aren't interested in assimilating into the United States. They are interested in almost recreating the kind of nightmare society that they're fleeing from right now. And, and, and by the way, difficult. it needs to be stated that uh, the UK is, has been doing precisely the same thing for many years now. And, and now we see the result. And the French did it, and the Germans did it. And again, I say we see the result. So if you are letting people in who can benefit the country, who can provide something of, of usefulness for the country and that want to become American citizens, fine, well and good. But they're not doing that. They're just letting in a tidal wave, a, a toxic wave of human sewage right now into the United States. And what's going to happen is that you are going to have a balkanization of the United States. And by that, I mean you will have pockets where these people will gravitate and they will become basically no-go areas for the police and security services in the United States. What, we're, what we just saw in Bradford, England, where you had thousands of these Shias flagellating themselves after they won a local district election, we're going to have in the United States. I mean, we're, we're getting a, a glimpse of it, a preview of it now on these university campuses where, you know, these, you can hear the call to prayer, the Shahada, uh, alongside all of these kind of woke, progressive, hard left chants of, uh, you know, from the river to the sea, the genocidal call for the elimination of Israel, um, and other kind of uh, progressive calls for the end of the American uh, empire as such. So you, you will have this, you will have this in the United States if you allow these, this uncontrolled mob of uh, foreigners into the country. And the, the hard left uh, elements in the Democratic Party are happy about that outcome if they could achieve it. They're, they're good with that. And so unless a Republican is, is voted into office in the next election in the United States, which is committed to closing that border, instituting more responsible immigration policies, and getting rid of all, if possible, illegal immigrants in the United States, and forcing them to reapply uh, legally for immigration uh, entry into the country, the, the empire is gone. The American so-called empire is finished and it won't be coming back in our lifetimes or, or at any other time. And this is yet I, I think, another I, reason why Israel has to become more independent. Exactly, precisely, because it has to be stated, this is, again, not a question of incompetence. This is a question of ideology. There, the, you take someone like George Soros, for example, with his open society uh, organization, with his billions that he uh, throws about in order to precisely in order to create this kind of chaos in, in different parts of the world. The, there are people in the world, and many of them today are inside the Biden administration, who do not believe in the right. concept of borders. They believe that everyone has the right to move freely, wherever they wish, across the globe. That there should be no borders. Right. There should be no nation states. There should not be... Uh, right. It should not be possible to prevent someone from entering your country. This this is the inane policy that some of the and, and ideology that some of these people uh, believe in. By the way, you mentioned uh, elections, the uh, upcoming elections in November in America. The question, of course, is will 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 there in fact be elections? Because it has been suggested by some that uh, if if you look at the the, the millions of people that have been entering the United States, by the way, and, and uh, for example, and also in the UK, for example, over, over many years now, a large 
proportion of them are single military age males. Correct. Uh, that itself is, is a destabilizing factor in any society. When you have a large number of single military age males, most of them uneducated, unskilled, uh, no one should be surprised that the Albanian mafia has uh, is, is having a, a, f a field day in the UK nowadays, for example. But it's also, it's also been pointed out There's not that, that they have... Uh, Shipments of illegal shipments of arms, arms being smuggled into the mm -hmm. United States, have been interdicted, and perhaps there is a connection between these these uh, facts, and perhaps as part of a of a uh, a plan to to uh, destabilize and uh, create chaos in the United States, and even prevent perhaps the elections taking place. Correct. Um, just recently. Uh, there was a massive illegal arms shipment that was exposed in uh, South Florida. Um, thousands and thousands of battle rifles manufactured in Turkey and shipped from Turkey to a recipient and labeled as uh, kitchen appliances and uh, shipped to a recipient in Florida with a, well, let's just put it a Middle Eastern sounding name and uh, business connections, okay, along with all of the ammunition uh, or enough ammunition um, to equip all these rifles with, okay? So the question that was raised was, okay, how many of these shipments have we missed? And the estimate is many. So here you have, as you put it, a large number of single military age men coming into the United States. Uh, many of whom, by the way, are undocumented. I mean, they, they just come across the border because there's nobody protecting it. The availability now to them, if necessary, if they like, of um, military-grade equipment. So, yes, we're looking at a, a very grave potential situation where coming up to the election, um, there might be so much chaos that the election would have to be called off. Now, I'm probability of that to occur, but we have to realize that one of the most popular movies right now in the United States is called The Civil War. And um, if you look at the premise of the, of the movie, and it has all of the elements that we've just been discussing. Now, when a movie comes out like this, a controversial movie, the producers make their business decisions based on the market. And if the market is prepared to receive a movie like this and find it interesting and compelling, um, then it'll be made. And that's what's just happened. So the other thing that I'm concerned about with all these undocumented people coming across the border is that there's no... Um, control of diseases, public health. We don't, I mean, some of them have been eventually found in hospital, washed up in hospitals, suffering. Uh, you said that, that, that they have crossed that, the border with, have been found to be carrying diseases. Right, and they who have subsequently washed up in emergency rooms uh, presenting horrific infectious diseases. And I, I, you know, it's kind of funny because you have the government instituting all these COVID rules and regulations on social distancing and wearing masks and being inoculated, I don't know, a hundred times, you know, in order to, to gain access to a movie theater. I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. But on the other hand, they're allowing literally millions of these people to come in with all manner of diseases, communicable diseases. So... You, you don't have to have some conspiracy to release a disease in the United States to accomplish some political end. It can occur naturally now, mostly because of this undocumented, uh, this unregulated border. So we can, we can be quite certain. Question. We can be quite certain that uh, certain political uh, elements and organizations and individuals will take all possible advantage of such an outbreak, even if it does happen in a totally unplanned manner, uh, in order to uh, clamp down once again, as they did some years ago, 
uh, on society and essentially to um, increase their control over the, the populace once again. You know, here's here's a scenario, Rob. Let's just say in certain cities in the South, which are red cities and expected to vote Republican, um, there are individuals found with highly contagious diseases. This is almost a certainty going forward. Well, if the Centers for Disease Control suddenly says we have to have a lockdown in these cities during an election, well, you can see exactly what effect that might have on the voting patterns in the country. And this is not something that, you know, is, is the result of the conspiracy fever that I have. After what we saw with COVID, there is nothing that we should discount the, as far as the, the unelected elite in, this, in the United States um, trying to pull off nothing. They're capable of anything, including this, under the guise of a public health. It should be it should be noted, Jonathan, that so much information has surfaced over the past four years regarding the the lies, the the deceit, the uh, hiding of information, the. Uh, forging of uh, research papers and, and test procedures. Right. Every, uh, everything possible to was done in order to bring about uh, a, a, pol a police state type reality in, right. in most Western countries. We know today it was based on lies and, and not on nothing factual. And we also Correct. know that, that those... Uh, those injections were anything but safe and effective, anything but. In fact, they were much worse than, than worthless. Well, um, well, here's a question for you, Rob. I'm, here's a question. It's impossible to believe they won't do it again. No, correct. But here's a question. Why is it that the list of side effects patients that have occurred all across the West, at least, is considered classified information? We have the situation in Israel right now. I've been asking questions repeatedly over why this epidemiological information is secret. If they have nothing to hide, why don't they release it to the public? That is to say, the number of patients that suffered serious side effects from this poison that was injected into them under the guise of being a vaccine. Why? Because I think if people actually did find out how many people were actually seriously harmed by this, well, field try, field trial of an unproven drug, th there would be serious political consequences to the to the government that instituted this this mass inoculation uh, uh, effort. Cur current so, est estimates. Current estimates amongst those who are well-informed and in the know, uh, are that between 13 and 17 million people worldwide died as a direct result of those inoculations. That, that, that does not even begin to count, uh, to take into account the numbers of people who, were, who didn't die but were very seriously affected, such as people, right, right. for example, who had massive blood clotting in their legs and had to have their legs amputated. Or myocarditis and youngsters with for, myocarditis for suffering. Right. Yeah, My suffering a heart attacks and dying. Peri pericarditis, myocarditis. Pericarditis as well. Um, yes. Etc. I, I myself know of such uh, examples uh, from personal experience. I know I know of a, a young man who was at the time 23 years old. His parents, uh, both of whom were. Uh, in, in the field of, uh, his mother is a doctor of biology and his, his father is also very well versed in these things and they told him, under no circumstances, take this, uh, do not allow yourself to be inoculated with this substance. But because of social pressure, all his friends were doing it, he went along with it. I know this family personally, this is not a story third hand or something, I heard this from, from the parents. 
and and I've known these people for uh, 25 years. Their son, who was uh, uh, just completed his military service in the Israeli army, uh, young, fit, combat soldier, in the peak of health, uh, he was rushed to hospital three times in the wake of, of the uh, two doses of this uh, untested, untried, or it was in fact tried, by the way. It's not even true it wasn't tried. It was tried. And and the results were so devastating that they were they were disastrous. They were they hidden. Were they, were, they were hidden. That's why they won't tell yes. you. That's why they won't give you the facts and the figures. At any rate, he he was rushed to hospital on three occasions: twice when he was in uh, near Yerushalayim, near Jerusalem; once when he was in Tel Aviv, um, because of um, uh, blurry vision, uh, heart palpitations, irregular heartbeat, and the like, and. Uh, one of the doctors, in one case, said to the father, I know, and you know what caused this, but I'm not allowed to write it down in my report. Correct. Correct. Well, in New York, when we were living there, there was a, a, a scandal that was finally uncovered there, where if a person, for example, was run over by a bus and left scattered, his, his, his uh, limbs were left scattered across the streets, and, they, and after being assembled, were taken for pathology, and he was found to have um, corona. His cause of death was put down as corona. Yes, this is well. And the well hospital known, received right, and the hospital received ten to fifteen thousand dollars from the government as a result. So, coming full circle now to the southern border, we don't know anything about the, the public health risk presented by the Biden administration's open borders. But we can draw a, a, a conclusion that the diseases that are being led into the United States, the communic highly infectious communicable diseases that are in fact, that have been found and that are allowed into the country um, to mingle the, these patients, the carriers, to mingle amongst um, mostly urban populations, concentrated urban populations, represent as much of a clear and present danger to the security of the United States as these single, unaccompanied military age, mostly Middle Eastern men do. Um, and as far as the election is concerned, we mustn't be surprised by anything that happens. Um, the Democrats in particular are capable of anything. And um, it's, it should be a concern to everybody, but um, the media has been very good at both uh, covering up and then distracting uh, people, particularly in the United States, from understanding the true threat posed by the O'Biden open borders policy. So this, again, is one of the reasons why the Republican Party in particular is uh, faring so well in the polls right now. Uh, people gradually are becoming aware of this threat on the southern border and um, appear to have enough of it. So we'll just have to see how this plays out in November, if there is an election in November. Which we shall find out in about seven months' time. So, Absolutely. at this point, uh, Jonathan, particularly due to your, the difficulties that we are experiencing <laughs> due to your current location and all those boisterous, uh, but Baruch Hashem, healthy uh, Israeli children uh, who, do, who do need a little bit uh, more in the realm of discipline and manners, but... Uh, that's something we can work These on. These are unaccompanied children. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are things we shall have to, to solve over time. But we're pleased that we have lots of little Jews running around Israel and uh, the Jewish people. Definitely. Abu Hashem does not suffer from the malaise of uh, almost all Western countries, as, as you no. know. Essentially all Western countries, without exception. The current figure, by the way, in the United States is 1.6 births per woman which is way, way below. Replacement the, rate. Way below. Uh, and the same is true and even worse. The situation is even worse in countries like Japan, 
Germany, Spain, Italy, Russia, uh, wherever you... Oh, wherever and you, China, for that matter. China, by the way, also is, is about to suffer a huge demographic hit. It's already begun, in fact. But these right. things we'll, have, we'll discuss uh, on another occasion when you are ensconced in your home. And we thank you, <laughs> we, we, we thank you for your uh, time and your insights today, Jonathan. Thank you. And, My uh, pleasure. We look forward to meeting again. Shalom. Be well. Shalom. Peace and victory. Shalom.